no, come over, Mom. I don't want you to catch this cold. If you had to cancel your trip with Dad, I would feel awful, and, well, I already feel awful, and I can't risk feeling any worse. I know, I appreciate it, Mom, but I'll be fine. Yeah, it's been through all of us, and every case gets milder, so that's good, right? We actually have enough to eat. Good food, too. Aren't you impressed? I know. Remember two weeks ago when I met my friend Marilyn? Well, she came over a couple weeks ago, and um, she helped me um, learn how to make freezer meals for an entire month. My freezer's full. I know, I told you her differences would be good for me. I remember last week when I couldn't go to the mom's meeting um, at church, well, she offered to help, but I just waved her off. You know, who really wants to enter the germ infestation that is our house? It was getting really grubby around here, but turns out I didn't have a choice. Yesterday, she showed up completely unannounced with a container of Clorox wipes. It was a little embarrassing. I mean, who wants your new friend to see it, their house at the, its lowest? But she went to town on my house and stayed several hours and even cleaned when she found a chemical reaction going between some yogurt in my sink and some leftover cabbage. Okay, so I totally understand why Claire would struggle to admit that she needs help because to me, if I admit that I need help, it seems like I'm not managing my home well. But the truth is that I'm not managing my home well sometimes. And so it's okay to admit that sometimes we have those challenging days. So I'm thinking about um, what is it that you do that maybe you do because of the influence of a friend? Like something that you do because you saw a friend do it, because a friend showed you how to do it. What do you now do as a mom because of the influence of a friend? For me, it's loving my kids. I have this friend who um, uh, she, you know, I just love the way she loves her children. Mm -hmm. And growing up the way I did, we just did not have that affection, you mm -hmm. know, and or the hugging and all of that. And so I learned from her how to be with my kids. And I, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm, that's, that's so awesome. beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Probably comes with some cultural changes, too. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Sunita? Um, I have a friend who shared with me that she intentionally um, gets herself dressed in the morning, puts on her makeup, and that allows her to be more productive with her day. So I kind of took that from her, and on my days that I'm not working, and if I'm just even home all day, I'll still get dressed, get my makeup on, and I find that my day is more productive too. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the crock pot. Mm. That has become my best friend because of a friend. I work full time and so by the end of the day, my brain is fried and I just don't wanna think about dinner. And so if I have dinner ready in the crock pot, then we actually eat. So for me, this is something um, that I learned to, you know, I heard about and then I was having a hard time actually doing it. But um, when, you're feeling the most frustrated during those tough moments in your mom day um, to you know put the child in bed or get them started with whatever they're doing for their nap or whatever or food and then just um, just fall on your knees and just pray even just for you know a couple minutes and for I had a hard time doing that at first um, but it's amazing how it has changed just mm -hmm. those couple minutes so it's like taking that that's those stressful moments and just like letting it be a, a time of just like praying mm -hmm. is completely transformed how I will see that day or how I'll see those moments. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, that's really impacted me mm -hmm. um, as in doing it. It's really changed, you know, how I see those difficult times. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. so have you guys ever been a part of a trade or a co-op before? Mm, you know what, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, date nights, especially when the kids were little, uh, because we didn't have the money for a babysitter. We didn't have family in town. So we had to figure out a way to trade. And so we would trade with other couples. And, you know, I remember I, I kind of learned over time, you learn the hard way sometimes. And so what we would do is we'd ask another couple to try it for a month. Like we like to do weekly trades. So we watch their kids Friday night, they'd watch ours the next Friday. So we'd get two, two times in a piece and then we would evaluate it. 
was this good? Was it a good match? Did the kids play well together? And if it wasn't, then we we had an agreement up front that it wasn't going to hurt our friendship. We would just, you know, we each wanted to find that good, um, that good match for our kids. Sometimes we'd even trade overnight, yeah. and you'd have a slumber party at their house, or they'd have a slumber party at our house. But yeah, and I think the key thing to th say about that too is we weren't. It was better for us as kids. We got to enjoy other kids as well. Mm -hmm. So I know some people struggle leaving their children with other people, but as a child, remembering that it was it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. That's great. Yeah, I have a. Uh, uh, two girlfriends who um, we we just get together and if there's a project going on at one of our houses we will just just go to each other's house and finish that project whether it's painting or you know putting up wallpaper <laughs> or just anything like that so that the mm -hmm. everything is finished and uh, mm -hmm. and we just trade trade homes. <laughs> do you do that on a regular basis or do you do that just as needed? As needed. Yes. Okay, so you know you can call these two yes. girlfriends because um, they're, they'll help you, but then in turn you'll, you'll yes. help them. So the next time around, they, if they have something going on, they can call us for organization or anything mm -hmm. like that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, for me, my neighbor is actually in a similar stage of life. She has a newborn and a toddler, and we will trade kind of um, spontaneously. And so if I have a meeting or an appointment, and she's getting her master's degree right now, and so you know I'll watch her children while she's studying, or she'll watch my children while I have an appointment or something. And it's been amazing because it's just kind of, you know, um, spur of the moment, like mm -hmm. on Thursday, can you watch him for a couple hours? And sure. And so it's, it's like, it makes me feel like I'm a little bit freer mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to say yes to things because I know that she's likely to be able to take him for, you know, a couple hours here and there. So that's been a huge, a huge blessing for, mm -hmm. for all of us actually. Yeah. yeah. That's, good. that's good. Yeah. So is there anything when you think about like, um, reaching out to those around you or inviting someone to do a trade or a co-op, like what gets in the way of that? Like what, is there anything that stops you from doing that? Because I know, you know, right now in the season of life I'm in, uh, I'm working full time, so I'm tired. And so I find myself, uh, which is funny because when my kids were little, I was tired too. <laughs> but um, I think I was also desperate for adult conversation because I was a stay-at-home mom, so I didn't care how tired I was. <laughs> I, you know, we would do something in the evening. But, um, but now I come home, I'm really tired. And so the thought of inviting somebody over to do freezer meals or um, you know, something like that, uh, I have to really push through that tired. And yet when I do it, Mm -hmm. I always am so glad I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so glad that I pushed through it. Um, but I have to admit that gets in the way of me uh, maybe initiating that. So is there anything that you can think of that gets in the way of that? Because I think if we don't recognize what stops us, we just keep uh, stopping ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, for me, it's uh, busyness. Um, I'm just a bit too busy and I'm afraid you know just one more thing to take on and you know that emotional um, thing that sometimes I just don't have any more to give you know mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. yeah that's no excuse <laughs> well I think that's a great point yeah. that you, it's good though to think about some of those things that we're already doing mm -hmm. and we could do with somebody else mm -hmm. and so just because you're busy you, you're probably doing the same thing that she's doing at home but she's doing it alone and you're doing it alone mm -hmm. you could be doing it together that's true mm -hmm. I mean, point. especially when you think of like a cooking co-op or like, a, you know, freezer meals or something like, I mean, we all got to eat, right? And yeah. so uh, that, that has to happen. And so if we can think of those things that, that fit well, you know, where we could match up with a friend, sometimes yeah. that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes I'm just nervous about extending myself out there because of rejection on the other end. They might not mm -hmm. get on board with whatever idea I'm presenting mm -hmm. yeah. um, to them. Mm -hmm. And so it just might be a bit uncomfortable, yeah. but I, sh I should just go for it and mm -hmm. see how it goes and where it takes us. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That whole fear of rejection yeah. thing, and it gets in the way all the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it might be uncomfortable at first, but you know, they are probably just as awkward as you are. And you know, once you break the ice. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. 
So who has our tip of the day today? Me, me. All right. Okay, so today's tip is if you're taking a mom a meal, use a disposable container so she does not have to return it when she's done. And if you're like me who freaks out about taking a meal and do not like cooking, <laughs> gift cards are wonderful. You know what, I would totally agree with that because when I was going through my cancer journey, I had people that brought me home cooked meals and they, a lot of them did bring it in disposable containers, but I had plenty of gift cards and boy, that was just as good. <laughs> it was just as helpful. It's food and it goes in your stomach and it's a good meal. <laughs> oh, well, this has been good. So what are you doing alone that you could be doing with a friend? Or what's a friend doing that you could help with? Or if you feel like you have no friends, what is one step you could take to move from being a might be friend to a trying to be friend? It's so important that we do life together because we're better together for sure.